Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday, May 17th from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And today we are joined by a special guest, my mom, and more, all the way from Pinole, California. And so she is in town for my daughter Rachel's wedding, which is coming up shortly. And so, you know, she's a big fan of the Midweek Connection, and so we invited her to participate today. Mom, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you, Joel. All right. Let's go ahead and do what we ordinarily do, and that is to read our daily lectionary texts for today and talk about them a little bit and see what the Lord might have for us. And so let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you so much for these good words to us today. Your words, your words of life and truth, your words that lead us into the way of salvation. Lord, I pray that as we read these words today, you would be glorified and we would be built up increasingly to be better witnesses of your kingdom here on earth. We thank you for this time. We thank you for my mom being present with us here today and uh, guide us in this discussion, Lord, we pray. And it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray, amen. Starting off today with Psalm 99. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in the pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalms 147, 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God by the on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives in, gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. And from the Old Testament, we have Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. When the Lord your God has cut off the nations whose land the Lord your God is giving you, and you have dispossessed them and settled in their towns and in their houses, you shall set apart three cities in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. You shall calculate the distances and divide into three regions the land that the Lord your God gives you as a possession, so that any homicide can flee to one of them. Now, this is the case of a homicide who might flee there and live, that is, someone who has killed another person unintentionally when the two had not been at enmity before. Suppose someone goes into the forest with another to cut wood, and when one of them swings the axe to cut down a tree, the head slips from the handle and strikes the other person, who then dies. The killer may flee to one of these cities and live. 
But if the distance is too great, the avenger of blood and hot anger might pursue and overtake and put, to, put the killer to death, although a death sentence was not deserved since the two had not been at enmity before. Therefore, I command you, you shall set apart three cities. From our epistle lesson today, we have James chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. And the gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 32, 31. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They neither store house or, nor barns. They have neither store house nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Oh, how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying about a single hour of your span of life, if then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet they tell that I tell you, <clears throat> Even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, when, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will the, he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink and do not keep worrying, for it is the nation of the the nation of the world that strives after all these things. For your father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. And back to our psalm, Psalm 9. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumbled and perished before you. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemies have vanished in everlasting rooms. Their cities have rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the peoples, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See that I suffer from those who hate me. 
You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, so that I may recount all your praises. And in the gates of daughter Zion, rejoice in your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they made, in the net they hid as their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol, all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, do not let mortals prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. And our final psalm today is Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Okay, Deuteronomy 19. Really odd. We don't often talk about cities of refuge, but I think think in connection with Psalm 9, I hope we noticed that when we were reading Psalm 9 that there are a couple images that are fulfilled there from Deuteronomy 19, or at least those same kind of concepts that are there. This whole idea that it is God who sits in righteous judgment, and right. so if there was an accidental manslaughter, uh, the Lord would not require death of that because uh, of the person who of the person who killed the other because it was an accident. It was not an unjust thing that was done. Um, and so this whole idea that God is the one who gives judgment, uh, righteous judgment, but verse 12, this is where we have that same word, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. So even if humans in our incapacity to always judge rightly, you know, in Deuteronomy it talked about how if the distance between the cities of refuge is too great, it's possible that the avenger of blood will overtake him and kill him, even though that was unrighteous in and of itself. God at that beginning of the creation of people, uh, of, of creation of the nation of, of Israel, his people, he gave them uh, the capacity to wait 
He gave them the capacity for anger to cool. He gave capacity for a full investigation to be made um, rather than uh, hot-headed, intemperate uh, injustice against something that was an accident. But at the same time, God is ultimately the, 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 the right avenger, the right uh, um, accomplisher of justice in, in all of its capacity. So um, it'll be, it'll, you know, we'll see how that connects with James and Luke in a second, but I just really enjoyed how Psalm 9 indicates that, that God is the one who judges rightly Mm -hmm. And humans, uh, even in the best of our circumstances, don't always understand the full of the story, uh, but God gives an opportunity for protection to keep uh, to happen. Well, and he takes his law and he gives parameters and he gives explanation. He doesn't just put it out there and say, okay, do with it what you want. There is an explanation and there are boundaries and there are parameters and there are, um, you know, there are things in place for protection because, as you said, it was an accident. There, you know, things happen. And so um, he recognizes that. And, and I think that that is done in that desire of protection and of good for his people. Right. If one goes further on into that Deuteronomy 19, it does talk about if people flee to the city of refuge that are actually guilty, then hey, there's there's no mercy on that, right? You know, it's just it, it works in both regards. You know, you can't uh, you can't take advantage of God's provision uh, uh, to excuse uh, your intentional misdeeds. Now. Now, that being said, this is where I think maybe we can make a connection to James chapter 5. Because what does James chapter 5 say about, um, you know, if, uh, let's see, if any of you are suffering, they should pray, any cheerful songs of praise, if any you sit, call the elders. But what does it say? Um, anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Okay. What's that whole context about? Like there are ways that our sins do result in complications of our lives, not just in our own lives, but complications with other people. This concept, I believe, of calling the elders, again, this is where um, the community of faith, you know, back then Israel was a community. You know, God was establishing, as you were saying, uh, proper boundaries, parameters around the community of faith. These are the ways that people of God should interact with people of God. And back then it was limiting the amount of violence. In the New Testament, we see it's, it's how do we approach forgiveness? How do we, uh, within community, uh, confess things? You know, not just our cheerfulness when we gather to sing, or not just in our, um, well, yeah, not just in our cheerfulness should we sing, but if we are suffering, if we are sick, if we are in sin, we invite the elders of the church. We invite community to come and, and do restoration there. I thought that's pretty. Right, and this is also where we pray for wisdom mm -hmm. before we start casting stones and that. You pray for wisdom and you're, as you said, cool off a bit before you react. I'm quite what? guilty of reacting rather than Yes. <laughs> hmm. You mean the word is applicable to you, Mom, even today? Yes. Okay. And you know, even bringing up James, the last verse in James about if you commit a sin or you try to win, bring somebody out of hell and they reject you, I've never, ever understood, okay, but God, okay, God does give up on people if they refuse to accept his salvation and his wisdom. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. I think today we're going to focus on this positive that's aspect. Right. Yes. <laughs> but yes, 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 that's a tough one. Um, and, and, right. And once again, ask for wisdom. Absolutely. Absolutely. In our, uh, in our uh, congregation today, we do regularly uh, 
look for opportunities to practice James chapter five with with anointing and with prayer, uh, not just in uh, a public worship service, but um, in in private homes or in circumstances where uh, you know hospital visits and things of that nature. Um, in our faith tradition, we believe in two sacraments. We have the sacrament of baptism and we have the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Um, anointing with oil in this sense is not, uh, in our faith tradition anyway, a, a sacrament. But what it is, is a demonstration of obedience to what God's called us to do. It's, it's, uh, it, it functions maybe sacramentally, even if it's not totally a sacrament where uh, by demonstrating with oil, it's, it's, a, it's appreciating the presence of the Holy Spirit that yeah. we uh, elders in the church uh, that administer an anointing are, are reading and reading what it says here in James and responding obediently to that. Um, this doesn't mean that all sicknesses are caused by sin. It just means, hey, if you're sick, you know, pray for healing. We also know that, uh, that all full and complete healing will come when we are actually in the presence of the Lord, that our, our physical bodies uh, still do wear out. Our, uh, there are um, ultimately uh, physical death does await all of us on, on this earth. But in obedience to even what James is saying, it says that the Lord, uh, the Lord will, uh, the Lord will raise them up and, and sins will be forgiven. And then the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. So in obedience to this, this is how we pray these things. It's not a magical thing. It's, it is a mysterious thing on how God interacts with us when we're obedient with scripture. But knowing that our bodies do wear out and we have uh, physical lack sometimes, I think this is where our Luke passage comes in, Luke chapter 12, where Jesus makes it very abundantly clear that the worries that we have about this life um, are often misplaced and that we should be trusting in God to provide for us those things that we need. Uh, you know, food is a necessity. Clothing is a necessity. Um, and Jesus here is saying that beyond even those things, God is providing for us what we need. And ultimately, uh, in relation to the rest of Scripture, it's a relationship with Jesus that we need first and foremost. Right. And what, what I, besides his care for we humans, he cares for the birds and the trees and the flowers, all of creation, everything. And to most, lots of the psalms are just filled with thanksgiving for all of these things. Mm -hmm. I think that we look at this, or for me, when I look at this Luke passage, like you said, it is this provision for all of creation. And, you know, how much more special are we? We were, we were created in his image and yes, he created sir. all these things and loves them and cares for them. How much more will he love and care for us because of that? And then I'm going to jump back just a second to that um, to that James though. So we have this: do not worry, put your trust in, recognize that God is this God of provision. But I think that even in this James passage, that I think those of us who are in the church, it gives us, you know, going back to use that same word that I used in the Deuteronomy, but it gives us these parameters, I guess, or these explanations, because the elders have a responsibility. So the leadership in the church, it does place responsibility on us that um, we are to care for people. We are to invite those people in. And then those who may not be in those leadership roles at this time, for they have an accountability. They, that's, not, that's not the word I want to use. They have, they have a relationship though with leadership in the church, that they have somebody that they can turn to mm -hmm. and that they can look to for guidance. And so God is this God of provision and care, even with who he puts in place around us within the community of believers. That's a good way to put it, um, right? Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Um, one of the ways that God does provide for us is providing spiritual accountability and, and leadership. And 
within the church. Uh, you know, there are plenty of other places in Scripture, both Old and New Testament, that if if we are not clothing the the, the naked, if we are not feeding the hungry, uh, then we are not doing those things that God has commanded us to do. And so. Um, People shouldn't worry, and why should people not worry? Well, Jesus does provide for us, but how does he provide? He provides through his church. He provides these things. So, yeah, that's a great, great connection. Love that. Love that. Mm. Um, you know, I know that we regularly hit Psalm 118 uh, in, our, in our reading, and uh, just the, the praises that are lifted up to God in that regard, uh, the refrain versus you know, one through four, his steadfast love endures forever. Um, and why then are we uh, invited into this relationship? Why do we have confidence that God's promises are true? Well, you know, his steadfast love endures forever. forever. There's a little brief recapitulation of the, of the history of Israel, uh, uh, all of the nations conspiring, the, the difficulties that were faced, uh, singing songs of the tents of righteousness and you know, the victory, all of these things, um, reminding history, uh, the, the people of Israel of their, of their past, that God is present during all of their challenges. Um, I preached not too long ago on the stone that the builders rejected has mm -hmm. become the chief cornerstone, really that, that concept from John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and how Peter describes that as we are being built into the temple of God, that, that Jesus is the chief cornerstone on, on which our lives are built. And when we allow ourselves to be built in that regard, then the Spirit dwells within us. So, uh, you know, ongoing regular reminder, as, as we read our lectionary texts and as we do that consistently, we are getting a more full picture of how all of Scripture is, is interconnected with one another. All of the themes and the concepts, even some of the difficulties and the challenges, they continually come back to this idea that God is, um, I, I love how you said that, God puts parameters around things, God is self-revealing, and he reveals himself in a certain capacity that these are the things that God does. And as we trust that God has revealed himself to us in that regard, uh, we believe that if we function within those parameters that he established for us, that our lives will increasingly reflect his glory, um, uh, increasingly give him the praise that he is due and ultimately then be able to share that with other people. Uh, you know, that, that whole line in there, uh, verses eight and nine, I think about it in light of, oh, just our ongoing political tensions and controversies and things. You know, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. And how we see that humans and those in human authority uh, can be just so like it, like, yeah, the yeah. whole thing, and not not wanting to go all political or anything, no, but I'm both not. sides and all the stuff. But sorry, now, now you blew what sorry, I was going to say. <laughs> well, let me say something, and maybe yes, that you maybe I'll remember. Bring it back. Um, I think too, Joel. That gets back to that very last line that I read there in Psalm nine. Um, Put them in fear, O oh Lord. Let the nations know that they are only human. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a recognition. We we have a place, and we are invited into this narrative by God, mm -hmm. that He is God, and we are not. Right. And what I was going to say is that when someone is complaining about politics, and I mean, you know, the whole situation, I have found myself saying more and more, God is in charge. I am not going to worry about it anymore. Perfect. <laughs> That, I think that kind of I think be. that I think that just encapsulates everything that we've read about today. You know, whether you are falsely accused, whether you are in lack of necessities, whether you are sick or all these things, it's you know, cast your burdens on Jesus because he cares for you. And we then as the church have the responsibility to to meet those needs when we when we find them.
sometimes we ourselves experience them, and sometimes the world out there is experiencing it, and we need to demonstrate that, that love as Jesus demonstrated for us, we need to demonstrate that with others. So that I guess ultimately everybody could then say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. 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 Natalie, you want to go ahead and close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Awesome. Gracious Lord, thank you for your words to us today. Thank you for your love for us, that your love is steadfast and full complete and that you love us so completely and in every aspect of our lives and that you have put out those parameters you have put out those boundaries you have put out um, your words to explain and to um, invite us in with justice and righteousness um, and mercy and grace and we just thank you that we can come to you that we can cast our burdens upon you and that you are there and that you are God and in your son's holy name we pray amen, amen. all right everybody thanks for joining us today hey if you want more of this content hit like and subscribe it just seems a little cheesy but if it's on YouTube it might help um, but we are looking forward to Sunday and we've got two services again 9 o'clock and 11 15 and actually Pastor Natalie is going to be preaching at both on Sunday we're really super excited about that and so uh, if you can be present with us in worship service please do so and if you cannot be present with us in worship please do consider watching online but uh, if you have any questions comments concerns don't hesitate to call the church we'd be happy to listen to you and then to pray with you uh, sharing our burdens together that we can glorify God. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.